Hello and welcome to today's episode of Piano TV. I am Alicia, your host, and today we are going to keep things to the point. We are going to, this is very violent, we're going to talk about cut time. Cut time is a time signature. We've talked about other time signatures on this channel before, like 4434468. I think we've talked about maybe, um, maybe others too. It's been a while. Um, but I thought we'd talk about cut time because it's a little bit different. So what we're going to be doing in this video is I'll just explain what cut time is. Um, we'll talk about like where you'll find cut time, examples of it, and um, how to interpret it when you come across it in your music. So let's get started. What is cut time? Cut time is 2-2 two -two time, also known as a la brave. If you remember our discussion on time signatures in the past, you'll remember that the top number is how many beats are in a bar. So in this case, two, two beats per bar. And the bottom number is the type of beat. So for example, if you add four, four, that would be saying there's four quarter beats per bar. But when we have two, two, that's like saying we have two half note beats per bar. Now where this gets confusing for people is that if you remember fractions from math class, two, two is mathematically equivalent to four, four. You just break it down. So two half beats per bar means the same thing as four quarter beats per bar. So that's why we're going to talk about like how they're, how they're actually different, even though they're mathematically the same. Okay. So if they're mathematically equivalent, what is the difference between cut time and common time? First of all, you can tell them apart visually by the vertical line. That's how you can tell it's cut time. So the C is four, four, that's common time. And then the C with like the line cutting it in half is you guessed it. That is cut time. Aside from that, the one big difference between the two is the pulse. This here is the pulse for four, four time. Uh, we count to four because in four, four time, we have four quarter note beats. And then as with any time signature, the first beat is going to be the strongest. That's what the S stands for. So beat number one is like that lands pretty strong. And then beat number two is weak. Then we have a medium beat and then we have a weak beat. So it's going to sound like this strong, weak, medium, weak, strong, weak, medium, weak. So the difference then with, with cut time or two, two time is that instead of having a four count, we only have a two count. And what that means is that we're going strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. There's no medium beat in there. We're going ba, 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 instead of. So the pulse, it's, it's a subtle difference and you're not necessarily going to be able to pinpoint it when you're just listening to music randomly, but there is a difference of pulse. In some ways, cut time is, is more similar to two, four time than four, four, since the pulse is the same. You're only counting up to two, even though again, mathematically two, two is the same as four, four. So when is cut time used? Well, cut time is usually used nowadays for something that's really fast tempo. So if you're in four, four and you're trying to play say can can, which I have here written in four, four, you're going to have to turn the metronome up really fast. So something like 160 beats per minute, I think for this one. But if you played can can with a two, two pulse, which is you know, the way it's supposed to be played, your metronome would be more effectively set to 80 beats per minute, right? So 80, 160, it's cut in half, um, which is much easier to listen to and follow along with than like the, if you're actually 160 is probably faster than that. But if you're, if you're, if you've ever tried to play along with the metronome at a fast pulse, um, it's often easier to play at a slower pulse. Now, marches are probably the most common use user of cut time um, just because they have their fast tempo and they're usually in a two, a, like they're in duple meter. So they're usually counting in like one, two, one, two, one, two. If you think ba da 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 da, kind of like, like jarring feel of a march, that would be a really good example of cut time. Another big reason that composers like to use cut time is to make the music visually easier to read when it's played at a faster tempo. Um, now this is, this is lifted from Wikipedia because I actually think it's an excellent example of this. Um, so I can show you what I mean. So what you're looking at on the top line and the bottom line are literally the exact same thing. Now the cut time version is easier to read for a couple of reasons. The beats are smaller, or I guess bigger in this case, so they're easier to read. And the frequent bar line divisions helps our eyes kind of. So you'll notice that um, in the entire 4-4 four, four first bar, like there's only two bars of music, there's 16th notes. It just looks more intense. But when you look at the cut time version, there's twice as many bar lines. You don't have any 16th notes. It's just a lot visually 
easier to understand. One thing that I found really interesting when learning about common time and cut time is that the C does not stand for common or cut, which is easy for us Westerners, you know, who speak the English language to assume. But, you know, that wouldn't make sense if you were learning music in, say, Japan or Italy or something like that, unless this word for cut also starts with a C. But I know for a fact that the Japanese language doesn't use a C. So that's very, like, egocentric of, of us English speakers to assume the C represents cut or common. It does not. Since music notation, as we know it, originates in Western Europe with, with religious music, three, four time was considered to be perfect because of the Holy Trinity, the church is all about threes. So three, four time used to be notated as a circle and music that was not in three, four time was represented by an incomplete circle to represent like that it wasn't a perfect time signature, basically. I just think that's a really neat little little fun fact. So you can think about that. This it, The C is also like a broken circle. There's a bit of a blurred line between time signatures. So if you were to come up to me and say, and argue, my husband will do this, that four, four and two, two, like common time and cut time are like the same thing. My answer might be like, yeah, but. Mathematically, yes. Musically, not so much. They're they're not drastically different and you're not necessarily gonna discern the two when you're just randomly listening to music, but there are some pretty important theoretical differences. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this discussion and maybe um, hopefully you're taking something home from this. Um, even if you're not listening to music and going like, I bet this isn't cut time. Um, Next time you hear a polka or a march or something really, really fast, maybe then you'll notice if it's in cut time or not. But for all intents and purposes, music and math are generally pretty similar, but they do diverge theoretically at points, but it's not totally black and white. Um, maybe I've just confused you at this point. <laughs> I feel like I kind of, um, sometimes when we talk about these concepts in music that aren't so black and white, I feel like people really want like, well, what is it? What is it? It's this or that. Um, but it's some of the lines in music are a little bit more blurry than that. So hopefully I didn't create more questions with this video than I answered. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. For all intents and purposes, um, I, I really lost my train of thought there.